we were told that this was a commercial proposition. It was being ha handled by the Border Lloyds Bank. And um, at first, they seemed very keen that we were going to bid. Um, and as the, pro the program of this uh, bid unfolded, particularly when we found out that originally we put in a bid by the closing date, um, we were then suddenly told that the co-op had come into it, which we were rather surprised about because they weren't the obvious supplier. Um, but when it came to the closing date, I said, what happened? And they said, well, actually, you were the only bidder to submit a bid on time. And I said, well, fine, then. Presumably, we've won. Oh, no. Um, we're going to do some more bidding. And as this is a commercial proposition, we can change the rules at any time if we so wish. Um, it was about that time that I started to hear rumours floating around that there'd been some commercial pressure uh, put on them by the politicians. And you see that the, the process itself was very much a, a political uh, imperative. Even before the last election, both parties had said that they wanted to see a new challenger bank on the basis that the banks had behaved so badly. They wanted to see a new, clean challenger bank, no investment banking, no foreign invest uh, adventures. A little bit like Captain Mannering, if you like, but on a rather more sophisticated scale. Um, but as this thing transpired, and as I was starting to hear rumours of political interference, we kept asking questions. I asked questions of the chairman of Lloyds Bank, and he's absolutely none whatsoever. Um, I asked questions of the politicians. They said absolutely none whatsoever. So we went through a first bid. That all petered out. They then went into a second bid. This time we bid again. Um, and we were then told that we'd lost. And even that petered out. And even then we were hearing rumours that the uh, co-op was not in very good shape financially. And they didn't know if they could carry on. But they did go through with it again. And this time I heard from the very highest level in the city that our bid was not going to succeed because a political decision had been made not to do this. Who was the very highest level? It was actually the then governor of the Bank of England. How does that make you feel? Well, I was furious. Um, if we bid and we lost to another institution who put in a, bit, a better bid, well, that's life. But that wasn't the case. I, I've worked a lot for the government. Um, and as a, on an apolitical basis, I spent a lot of time in the Ministry of Defence. And my experience has always been that people tell the truth. I asked for a meeting with a minister responsible for this who assured us that he played no part in this at all. And now I read in the press that he's had, before this was finally decided, 30 meetings with so Reverend Flowers. Just to clarify, are you talking about the um, Treasury Minister, Mark Hoban, who yes. had 30 meetings with uh, Reverend Paul Flowers? Well, I, I'm just repeating what I've read in the press, okay. that he's had 30 meetings, but that doesn't look to me like had no, no involvement in it. Lord Levine, there will be some people who would say that you have sour grapes because you've lost money. Mm -hmm. What do you say about that? Well, no, I don't have sour grapes. You know, I've been around for business for quite a long time. You win some, you lose some. If you lose, as I said earlier, if you have more than one bidder and the other bidder puts in a better bid than you, uh, you have to write it off to experience and you win some, you lose some. But the, the other bid was not a credible bid. And if you say, well, how do you know it wasn't a credible bid? You've only got to look at what's happened. Do you think today that anybody who was asked to buy 632 branches of a bank, knowing what we now know, and what a lot of which we were aware of at the time, would actually go and do a deal with a cop? So it's, it's, it's only sour grapes if, you, if you're a bad loser. But as far as we were concerned, we were the only viable bid, and nobody would listen to us. So what's the lesson to be learned from this, Lord Levine? Uh, you say that the government actively wanted Co-op to get this bid for these branches, and we're going to disregard your bid, come hell or high water. What's the wider lesson to be learned? I think that it wasn't just the government who wanted this. It's a strange situation. 
The opposition wanted it as well. So the entire body politic wanted it. And the, the other coalition partner, uh, of course, Dr. Cable, was a great supporter of mutuals. I did write to him afterwards, and he wrote and said, well, look, I can't really interfere, but then in a handwritten note on the bottom, he put, uh, I can entirely understand your concerns. So it's a very odd situation where you don't have the usual thing where you've got one party turning the other party's eyes out. You've got everybody pushing in one direction because it seems to be the flavour of the month. And then, unfortunately, they chose the wrong party to support.